In this video, we take a look at the bubble sort algorithm. We will trace through the algorithm with step-by-step -step examples so you can see how it works. Take your time and pause the video when needed. Once you've mastered the algorithms in this section, take a look at SLR8, Classification of Algorithms, which will go over big O notation. This notation is a way of expressing the time complexity of algorithms. The time complexity of the bubble sort is O n squared. Let's start by looking at the pseudocode for a bubble sort. Pause the video and work through this code carefully in your head. Make sure you understand what each line is doing. Try copying each line down as you work through the algorithm. This step is very important. Don't skip it. Once you're happy with the basics of the algorithm, unpause the video. Let's work through the algorithm now using a simple set of data. Follow along, pause the video if you need to, and make sure you understand what is happening to the data set at each stage and why. Here's our original unsorted set of data, B, A, E, D and C. And key to this algorithm is the idea that we have a swap made variable, which currently at the start of the program is set to true. We enter our while loop and the first thing we do is we set swap made to false. We compare the first two items in the set. We discover they're the wrong way round and so we swap the items and we also therefore set the swap made variable to true. We move on and compare the next two items B and E. We discover they're in order so no change is needed. We proceed to E and D. We discover they're out of order, therefore we swap them. And of course, we set swap made to true. It's already true, but in purpose of the algorithm, we still set it anyway. We now compare E and C. They're out of order, so we swap them, and again, we set swap made to true. We have reached the end of the set, and so the while loop jumps back to the beginning. It checks swap made. It discovers swap made is true, so we enter the while loop again and go back to the beginning of the dataset. The first thing that happens is we set swap made to false. We compare the first two items in the dataset, A and B. They're in order, so nothing happens. We move on and compare B and D. They're in order, so no change required here either. We compare D and C. They're in the wrong order, so they're swapped, and the if statement kicks in, and we change swap made to true. We compare D and E. They are in the right order, so no change required here either. Once again, we've reached the end of the while loop and the end of the data set, so we go back to the beginning. We check swap made, which, once again, has been set to true at some point during this last while loop. So, we go back to the beginning, of the data set and start again. The first thing that happens is we reset swap made back to false. A and B are compared, no change required. B and C are compared, no change required. C and D are compared, no change required. And D and E are compared and no change required. For the third time, we've reached the end of the while loop and the end of the data set. This time through, however, swap made was never set to true, it remained false. Therefore the entire while loop can now be exited. We now know therefore that the data set is sorted and in order. Remember, to really master this algorithm you should try working through it again with a different set of data and also try coding it in a programming language of your choice. Once you've achieved this you should be able to tackle all questions relating to this algorithm in the exam.